Pennsylvania investors, I'm going to show you how you can become a millionaire starting with only $25,000. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, the MLS Search and Analysis Show, to be specific. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise. I run this bitch, all right? <laughs> what we do, what we do out of this bitch is we help everyday people like you invest in real estate, right? And I could help you become a millionaire, right? I'm going to put together the path for you to become a millionaire starting out with only $25,000, right? I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. Specifically, who I'm working for right now is my man, Abe. Abe, you're an investor from PA. And the market I work is not... In PA, by the way, it's uh, stayed over. We're in Ohio. That's okay, though, because this strategy is going to work no matter where you are. And even if uh, you want to do the strategy in your home market, you can if the prices allow you to do so. Or you could be like my man Abe and work with us, and we will work for you remotely. This is a 100% remote strategy. Abe does not have to travel to the uh, Cleveland market to look at this property. My team will do all that on his behalf, right? But what we're going to be able to do is provide you the path to millionaire status over the long haul and it starts, it starts, my friend, with one property, and I'm going to get into the details on that property right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Now we get to the real deal, man. The meat of the show. This is where I put the actual properties out there. This is a real property that you can really purchase, right? We're going to do so for less than $25,000, all right? I've got hundreds of properties just like this in my portfolio. 3211 West 30th. Cleveland, 44109. It's the old Brooklyn neighborhood, right? We're fairly close to Clark Fulton as well. We're close to Clark Fulton in the Metro Health area, right? Old Brooklyn, Clark Fulton, Metro Health, right? Those are all three cool things, right? All right? So you kind of got like uh, Clark Fulton is right here. Metro Health is going to be right up in here. Actually, this is this is it right here. It's a little little north. We're right here. Old Brooklyn's right here. Brooklyn Center, nice area too. Stockyard's nice area. All of these areas, but specifically Clark Fulton, are going to benefit from the proximity to Metro Health, right? Metro Health, they're putting in a billion dollar investment into that campus and the surrounding neighborhood, okay? Billion dollars, right? A billion dollar investment into a low income neighborhood like this, in my opinion, it's going to do nothing but good things. Uh, in the future. In addition to that, if we go north a little bit, you got Tremont, Ohio City, downtown Cleveland, the Flats, Detroit Shoreways over here, right? All of these neighborhoods, folks, all of these neighborhoods up here, right? These are areas that have already gentrified. You can't pick up properties for 25 k over there, right? But you can do so over here. So my long-term outlook for this area is very, very high, right? But that does not mean it's a luxury neighborhood right now because it is absolutely not. Anybody who tells you it is doesn't know what they're talking about or they're lying to you, right? I believe it's got a healthy shot at becoming one in the future, but I don't have a crystal ball. But what I can tell you is if I am going to speculate on what neighborhoods are going to turn around, I'm going to pick the neighborhood that is bordering other neighborhoods that have already done so and that has a huge corporate investment of a billion dollars going into it. But right now, it's a Section 8 neighborhood, right? If you check out the Ultimate Guide to Grading Cleveland Neighborhoods, which just so happens to be in the show notes below or linked on HoltonWeiss.com, if you check out our Tools and Resource tab, uh, I graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale in the Cleveland market, right? This neighborhood, we're looking at a D, possibly C neighborhood, right? Like, 
investors, they start to, you know, ask me questions all the time. Like, give me like a high D or let me get a, a D plus or, you know, a C minus. Like, we are splitting hairs, folks. Like, if you take a D neighborhood, right, something like this, this is like a neighborhood where it's like very important to do like Section 8. You're getting a lot of low-income tenants. You take a neighborhood like that, it's worlds apart from a high-end A-grade neighborhood, right? Like, we're doing a lot of short-term rental business right now. We are renting, like, four or $500,000 houses that are on golf courses, right? Those are night and day, right? Two different worlds, okay? But then going from, like, is this, like, a D? Is it a D plus? Is it a C minus? Is it a C? It's, it's really splitting hairs. They're very similar. What you need to know about this market right now is this is the kind of neighborhood that your tenants, they're always going to have a small amount of money. The best part of these tenants, the best types of these tenants in these kind of neighborhoods, in my opinion, is the Section 8 tenants, right? You get yourself some Section 8 tenants, you don't have to worry about a lot of the bad stuff that happens in these neighborhoods because a lot of the bad stuff that could happen in these neighborhoods happens directly after a tenant doesn't pay rent. You see, you get a tenant, their car breaks down. They don't go to work that day. They get fired from their job. They don't have savings. They miss rent. You got to evict them. You evict them. That costs you a bunch of money. Maybe they're pissed at you now. They damage the house on the way out. You got to spend money to fix that. While it's empty, maybe vandals come in and fuck the house up even more. Maybe squatters come in, right? So if you could eliminate the non-pay, right, you eliminate all that stuff. And then you don't have to pay uh, more money to release it again. You don't have to deal with vacancy, right? So if you could just nip the non-pay in the butt, solves a lot of your problems, right? You do that with Section 8. Now, currently, we got two tenants in there, right? They're paying below market rent, right? Listing agent went ahead and listed their rents on the listing. 550 for one of them, 600 for the other. Both are two bed, one bath. I don't have any photos. The listing agent didn't get any photos, okay? But that's okay. Right? I literally have hundreds of duplexes exactly like this. They, we just got two shots to the front here. Right? These are all the same, dude. Like, right here, this is a living room. Right here, that's going to be a dining room. Right there, that's the kitchen. Over on this other side, you got a bedroom, a bathroom in the middle, and another bedroom. They're all the same layout. All come with hardwoods. Now, the reason the listing agent didn't get any pictures of the inside is, I'm sure, A, he doesn't probably want to. B, it's... Not fun dealing with tenants. They don't they don't like you coming in their house bothering them, okay? That's part of the game. It's part of the business. It's not a red flag. Uh, that's just what you get when you deal with tenants in this neighborhood, okay? It's very difficult, right? That's why we sell so many properties in the investment properties for sale show because we are the best at it, right? Because you get a lot of realtors. They don't know how to work with it. They think that you got to bother your tenants and do showings. We don't do that. We don't let you guys go on the property. I get my video team in there one time. We tell the tenants, hey, we're only going to be in there once. We're not going to fuck with you. Work with us, we'll work with you, right? And they let us in there, right? That's how it works. Not to mention, usually the properties we sell, oftentimes we're managing them. So saying, hey, motherfucker, if you don't let me in there, I'm going to kick your fucking ass out. Uh, that also gets them to cooperate, right? But not every mom and pop seller is going to do that. This real estate agent probably doesn't have the authority to do something like that, right? So you get a lot of properties listed without pictures. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to tell you this. You have to understand this. 550 and 600, long-term, month-to-month tenants, right? That's what we got. There's no scenario where when these folks move out, we just go in there, sweep it up, and then we get you new tenants at market rent. Don't work that way. I'm sure you're going to have to refresh the units. You're probably going to spend anywhere between 5 and like 10, 12, 15K possibly making the units look good. I know we got newer windows, but like I don't know what's going on with the interior, right? Do we have to refinish the hardwoods? If we do, that's something we do once and we don't do it again. Some landlords put carpet in these. You don't need to. I like to refinish the hardwoods so you never have to mess with that in between tenants. I'm sure we're going to have to repaint all the walls, right? Do we have to do a new kitchen? Maybe we do, maybe we don't. That's where you get an extra like 5, 6, 7K add to your budget. Do we have to totally redo the bathroom, right? Do they have a vanity from 1990 in there? If so, we got to replace it, right? That's how it works, okay? But after that, they're pretty well hardened, and then you could probably just get away with just repainting between every tenant, right? Shouldn't have to mess with the floors, right? So with all that said, right now, they want $94,900 for this. and We got to give it to them. If you want to take it down, that's what you got to pay. That is an attractive price in this market, right? Because if you look at the market rent, what this really is, this is a duplex that's going to bring you 1500 all day, 
That's 18000 a year, right? After you factor in your fixed and variable expenses, right? Your repair and vacancy estimates, because, again, that kind of stuff will happen, right? Your capital expenditures, right? Hot water tanks, roof, furnaces. None of those are going to be new in this, right? Furnaces cost 3 Gs, last 30 years. Hot water tanks, last 15 years, cost a G. That's like a seven or $8,000 roof. After we do the inspection, because this video is just the first line of defense. This is just the first step of due diligence. After we do that inspection, do not. Expect any of that to be new. It's all going to be mid to end of life, okay? That's why we calculate that stuff in for our long-term holdings, right? But after calculating all of those estimates in, I project this property should clear a little bit over nine grand a year. Not every year. Some years will be better. Some will be worse, right? The year you do a $7,000 roof, your, your stuff is going to be killed that year, right? That's why you average it out, right? Okay, doing that. Paying 94.9 allows you to pick it up for less than 25k out of your pocket, right? Using the power of financing. All you gotta do is spend 23,725. We have lenders that will give you the other 71,175. Okay, 30-year loan, fixed interest loan, tax deductible. That is the name of the game, folks. You do that 10 times. You could take 250,000 dollars cash. Turn it into a million dollars of property. Just wait 30 years. You've already made $750,000, right, for your retirement. It doesn't account for the approximately nine grand a year every year on average that I project. That doesn't account for, like, between a 1% and 3% appreciation. That doesn't account for the fact that I believe this neighborhood will probably do better than historical appreciation in this market because I believe it's one of the neighborhoods that will appreciate the most because of its proximity to that billion-dollar investment, because of its proximity to the lake, because of its proximity to other neighborhoods that have already gentrified, right? So 23.4% cash-on-cash return projection plus all that other good stuff. I think it makes a lot of sense to buy a property like this with tenants paying below market rent that's not going to be in perfect condition because of all that. We take it over and we slowly increase those tenants' rents to market rent so they don't move out. If one of them balks and they end up do moving out, well, then you bite the bullet early. You rehab the unit. You're at 750 Nothing to worry. Get a Section 8 tenant in there, right? That is... The name of the game. You string together a bunch of these deals and you will make yourself a multimillionaire with time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.